And so as you know, we are continuing our series, Who Am I? And today we are actually talking about I am a representative. I am a representative. And the main verses and the main passage we are using for this comes out of Ephesians chapter 5, and it's verses 1 through 2, and it says this. It says, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. And so most of the time that we've gone through this series, we've often talked about how to be who we are. For example, one of the first messages Pastor Richie did was a message called, I am loved. And he talked about a bunch of ways in which we can walk and a bunch of ways in which we can live that show we are loved by Jesus Christ. And it was a great reminder and it was a great message. A few weeks ago, Pastor John did a message about how I am bold. And he talked about the boldness that it takes to sacrifice your lifestyle for the will that God has planned for your life. And it was a great reminder and a great encouragement that talks about how we need to lay down what we want for our lives and accept what God has for our lives. And just last week, Pastor Richie did a message about how I am successful, and he talked about how we can walk to be successful, not in light of the world or in light of our own eyes, but in light of Jesus Christ. And they're great reminders and great examples of how to live as who we are called to be. But what's really interesting about I am a representative, and even more so about Ephesians chapter 5, is if you continue to read Ephesians chapter 5, it doesn't explain to you how to be an imitator of God. It explains to you how not to be an imitator of God. So Ephesians chapter 5 pretty much tells you how to be a representative by telling you this is what not to do. For example, if you keep reading, Ephesians 5 verse 6 says, Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. And even the verses leading up to that one from the beginning of chapter 5 pretty much says, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, because people will deceive you with empty words. And it's pretty much telling you, don't do this if you claim to be an imitator or representative of God. And it is a great example because the goal of today's message is not to just simply talk about what it means to be a representative of God. I want to talk about the importance of what it means to not be a deceiver of God. Because both are important. That is exactly what Ephesians 5 is talking about. So just as much as this message is entitled, I am a representative, it could easily be titled, I am not a deceiver. And so a lot of times when I talk to people what it means to biblically live for Jesus or to be a representative of Jesus with your life, I often ask people the question, why Jesus? Why Jesus? Why have you personally chosen Jesus to be your source for eternal salvation? Why do you choose to represent him? Because the answer to that question, I believe, shows whether you are a true representative of Christ or whether you may have been deceived to believe something else. Because if your reason for living for Jesus and for representing Christ is not Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2, then dare I say we may have been deceived. If our reason for accepting Jesus Christ as our Savior is not because Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, which is what Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2 says, then dare I say, friends, that we may have been deceived. So this morning, I want to personally ask you the same question. Why Jesus? Why do you personally accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Why do you choose to represent him with your life? Is it because he loved you and gave himself up for you? Or is it because of something else? And that's what I want to dive into this morning. Jesus, we come before you today and we just thank you for just this amazing opportunity that we have. And I just pray that you would just be speaking through me. God, call my nerves, use me, use me as your vessel. And may you speak everything that you want to say, nothing more and nothing less. And may it all be for the glory of you. I pray that everyone in this room, everyone watching online, that their eyes would be opened, their hearts would be softened, and that you'd be ready to speak to them whatever it is that you have for them this morning. And we pray that your will will be done throughout it all in your name. Amen. Amen. So if I'm being honest with you guys, right off the bat, I think one of the biggest reasons that we don't fully represent Jesus Christ to the best of our ability 
is because Jesus may not have been fully represented to us. Let me say that again. I think one of the biggest reasons Christians struggle with representing and showing who Jesus Christ is is because Jesus may not have been fully represented to us. What do I mean by that? I mean we may have been described to us by someone who is a deceiver with empty words. Someone who speaks with words that hold no biblical truth, no biblical meaning, but they try to just sell us a gospel that isn't really real. To put this in a better understanding and in a better picture and to put this in the better perspective, think about the most god-awful infomercial you have ever seen in your life. I know, there's a lot to choose from, believe me. But just think of one horrible infomercial you've ever seen in your life. And some of you know immediately where I'm going with this because if you want to know the job of someone to deceive and to put a bunch of empty words that don't live up to the standard of a specific product, watch any infomercial ever, and you will know exactly what I'm talking about. For example, how many of you remember when, uh, when the Sham Wow was a thing? Anyone remember that? Anyone remember the amazing product of the Sham Wow? Forget for a second about the product. The dude who tried to sell that to you was terrifying. Can we all just agree on that? The dude in the infomercial is probably the scariest person who could ever sell a product known to man because he would literally look to you in the camera. The man never blinked, and he would just stare into the camera to try to get you to buy a washcloth. It was absolutely terrifying. The dude just scared the heck out of you. Or how about the one, this one's a whole lot more recent. How many of you remember when the Snuggie came out? You remember when that was like the biggest thing being sold? I'm not even going to ask how many people in here own one because I feel like I'll be disappointed right off the bat. But the point is, the Snuggie was probably one of the huge things that was being sold at this time. And it was probably one of the biggest successful things being sold. But does anyone remember the pitch that the Snuggie even used? The infomercial literally opened up going, are you tired of paying your heating bill? Buy a blanket. No one batted an eye. Two seconds in, it's got sleeves. Everyone was sold. I'm like, are you kidding? If you're anything like me, you're sitting at home going, there is someone in this world making bank because one day they decided to wake up and cut two holes in a blanket. Like, there is nothing that will make you feel like more of a failure in life than knowing this person sold this product. And yet people loved it. People loved it. Even later on that year, everyone I talked to about this, no one remembers this product. And the reason they don't is because this product was quite possibly the funniest product I've ever seen tried to be attempt being sold on an infomercial. It was sold, I think, later on, the same year as the Snuggie, if not the beginning of the next year. But it went down as probably one of the worst infomercials and the worst products trying to be sold that year. I don't honestly remember entirely what it was called, but there literally came out, um, it, was, it was a giant onesie for adults. I don't know if anyone remembers that, but they're literally for a span of a few months came out with a giant onesie for, I, you can't make this stuff up, I'm not lying to you. It legit was a product people were trying to sell. And you can tell how desperate deceivers are to get you to buy something by how idiotic they're willing to look. Because in this infomercial, right in the middle of this infomercial, it says, wear it at home, wear it to the office, wear it at a football game. If your job lets you show up in a onesie, and you don't get fired, you should want to be fired anyway. No one walks into the office like, what up, Tom? Like, no, that doesn't happen. That just doesn't happen. It's weird. And just so all of you know, just so all of you know, if you are my parents and I was your kid, and you are at my football game, and you stand up in a onesie and go, whoa, that's my boy, I no longer know you. I just want you to know, disclaimer, if you show up, and you go, yeah, I know that guy. No, you don't. You best believe I am telling everyone I know. I have no idea who that is. I hold no relation to them, and they just had too much to drink. There is no way I'm acknowledging someone who shows up to a football game in a onesie that I know who you are. Because it is one of the most ridiculous things that I've ever seen try to be sold. But just like deceivers have a bunch of empty words and add-ons to try and get you to buy a product, what does every infomercial have at the end of all of their commercials? But wait, there's more. See, you knew exactly where I'm going with this. But wait, there's more. Just like at the end of this onesie commercial. But wait, if you buy one onesie, now we'll send you a second one with a cute little poop shoot in the back. All right, so now, now not only can you go to the bathroom in this thing, but you never have to take it off. And it is just the most ridiculous thing I have ever seen try to be sold. And don't even get me started on if I see one more Flex Seal commercial, all right? That's all I'm going to say. 
Because if I see one more boat made out of tape, so help me. But all I'm saying, the point I'm trying to make with this is that I'm pretty sure we almost all have the exact same question I have every time we watch this infomercial. Every time we watch these infomercials, the number one thing and the number one question that goes through my head is why are you willing to look so dumb if the product you are selling you claim is so great? Why? Like, why, why, are you, why are you willing to look like such an idiot in front of the entire nation if the product you're trying to sell is so good? Because if the product is everything that you say it is, shouldn't it just sell without you looking dumb? But what's crazy is we can take that exact same question and that exact same mindset and ask the same thing to every person who has been deceived. If Jesus Christ is everything that he says he is, and the gospel is everything that it claims to be, shouldn't it just sell? Why do we have to put so many add-ons to it? Why do we have to fill it with so many empty words? If the gospel is everything it claims to be, shouldn't it just be enough? Because to representatives of Christ, to true representatives of Christ, it is. The gospel is enough. They don't need any more further reason to continue to represent God. The gospel alone is enough. But to deceivers, it isn't. They may say it is. They may say they agree with you, but that's part of their deceiving scheme. Their lifestyle will show a completely different story. And a great passage and a great story to help understand this is out of Matthew chapter 7 and it's verses 21 through 23 and it's a great story in the gospel and I know a lot of people may have heard of this one before. I know a lot of people may know what this story is and it's honestly probably one of the scariest stories that Jesus tells but it's a story that I am thankful for regardless because it warns me of the path not to go down. Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 through 23 says this, It says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. See, the big mistake that these men made was they thought they could replace Jesus with good works and miracles. These men thought they could replace Jesus with good works and miracles. And not only did they not inherit the kingdom of God because of it, but they fell into a trap that I believe most deceivers at some point or another fall into. A trap that I want to warn you about today and a trap that I want to pray for freedom from if you find yourself in this category because it's so easily overlooked because of the weight of this text, which don't get it twisted. The point of this text and of this story is that you cannot replace Jesus with good works and miracles. That is what we should get out of this story. But there's also a trap in here that these men fell into that I think is so easy to fall into that once I say it, you'll say, well, duh, of course that's a trap, but yet it's so easy for people to fall into. And the trap that these men fell into is that they spent their entire lives representing a man that they never even knew. It says right here in verse 22, they cast out demons in the name of Jesus, they performed prophecies in the name of Jesus, and they did many miracles in the name of Jesus. And they managed to do all of that without knowing Jesus. Friends, if there is one thing you hear today, hear this. If you claim to be a representative of God, you must know Jesus. You must know him. There is no way around it. If you claim to be an imitator of God and a representative of of Christ, you must know Jesus. Jesus. Back to the beginning of Ephesians chapter 5, what does it say? It says, therefore be imitators of God and love as Christ loved us. Why do I bring that up again? Because I want you to understand that it is impossible to walk in God's love and not know Jesus. 
It's impossible. You cannot walk in God's love and not know who he is. Therefore, it is impossible to be an imitator of God without having a personal relationship with Jesus. You can't do it. You cannot be a representative or an imitator of God without a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And yet that is what so many religions, that is what so many cultures, and that is exactly what these men tried to do, was they tried to imitate God, be on God's side, without ever knowing who Jesus was. And it can't work like that. It can't work like that. Because as hard as it, in, as it is to admit, this world is still full of quote-unquote Christians who are willing to represent Jesus based only on what he can do for them and not on what he's already done for them. These men... These men were only in it to see God move in the unfinished work in their lives rather than be in it because of Jesus' already finished work on the cross. These men and so many people in this world are only in it to see God move in the unfinished work in their lives rather than represent Jesus for the already finished work he did on the cross. And that is a huge, huge problem. I've been involved in youth ministry for about six years now, and I know I don't maybe don't look that old, but I've been involved in youth ministry for the past six years of my life, whether it's been as a youth pastor, as an intern, or as a volunteer. I've been involved in the ministry field for the past six years of my life. And hands down, the hardest part, the hardest part about being in youth ministry and about being in ministry in general, I'll venture out to say, is watching someone who so closely followed God slowly start to walk away. It is the hardest part. It is the hardest part, I would venture out to say, of any ministry is watching someone who so closely followed Jesus Christ with their life slowly begin to walk away. And whenever this happened in youth ministry, I would always go up to this person and be like, wait, can can we sit down? Can we talk? Can can we go get coffee? Can I at least ask you a few questions? Because I I just want to talk to you about the decision you're making so I can have a little bit of understanding of why you're doing what you're doing. And every time I sat down with these students, I almost got exactly the same answer from all of them. Whether that's someone here in Georgia, whether it was someone in Wisconsin, or whether it's someone from my home state in Illinois, I would almost always get the exact same response whenever I asked them, why are you walking away from Jesus? And the number one answer I would always get is they would look at me and they would go, you know, God just hasn't done enough for me lately. What? You're you're telling me dying for your sin and taking away eternal punishment that you so justly deserve and replacing it with an eternity of glory with Jesus Christ forever isn't enough for you? No, no, no. I, I get... I get what Jesus did for my afterlife and for, for my eternity, but I'm, I'm talking about right now. God just hasn't done enough for me right now. Friends, I want to take this time to apologize to any student, to any kid, to any adult, or to any elder that may have been told at some point in your life that once you give your life to Jesus, it's going to be sunshine and rainbows from then on out because it's just not true. It's just not true. But more so than that, I want to apologize to anyone who may have had Jesus watered down in their lives and anyone who is told that the gospel is anything less than sufficient for your life because it is. It is. Regardless of if the healing ever comes, the gospel is sufficient. Regardless of the relationship ever works out, the gospel is sufficient sufficient. And regardless of if the prayer is ever answered, the gospel is sufficient, and it is everything that we need in order to be true imitators of God. And I'm not saying, don't hear me wrong, I'm not saying that it is bad to pray for these things. I'm not saying it's bad to ask for God's blessing to come into your life. I'm not saying it's bad to ask that God would show up in the middle of your mess. I'm not saying it's bad to ask God for a specific relationship. I think we should ask God for those things. What I'm saying is the problem is when that is the foundation of why we believe in Jesus. What I'm saying is that is the problem of when this is the foundation of why we choose 
to represent him because it can't be. It can't be. Because if your representation of Jesus is built on what he can do for you and not on what he's already done for you, friends, it's only a matter of time before we fall away as well. If we only trust in Jesus, if we only live for Jesus because of what he can do for us instead of what he has already done for us on the cross, it is only a matter of time before we fall away as well. And we can't let that happen. We can't let that happen. So today, I want to ask you one last question. I want to ask you one last question. We opened up with a question, and today I would like to close with a question. I want to ask you a question that I believe is going to show you where in your life you need to do better at and where in your life you need to continue to represent Jesus to see which side of the spectrum that you are on. And the question that I want to ask you today is this. If Jesus does nothing else for you for the rest of your life, are you still willing to represent him? If Jesus came down today and he said, that relationship that you've been praying about, it's not what I have in store for you. That career that you wanted, it's not going to end up that way. That healing that you're praying for, it's not going to happen. If Jesus came down today and told you that, would you still be willing to represent him with every aspect of your life? Because if your answer to that question is anything less than yes, we may have some repenting to do. If your answer to that question is anything less than yes, we may need a better study and a better understanding of what the gospel truly is. Because it is not to believe in so that things in your life can become better. We represent Jesus because of what he did for us. And so we need to make sure, friends, we need to make sure that our representation of Jesus is built on Christ and Christ alone, and that there is nothing a deceiver could add or take away that would make us think otherwise. And so the last two points that I want to leave you with today before we pray and before we close out, the last two points that I want to leave you with is this. Know the gospel and know Jesus. Those are the two things I want you to walk away with today. Know the gospel, and know Jesus. Because if we know the truth of the gospel, then we won't be deceived. And if we truly know Jesus, then we won't want to leave. And so I want to close today with a little bit of extra time because I want to pray not just for anyone who hasn't given their life to Jesus today, but I want to close today praying for every believer in this room, for everyone who calls themselves a representative of Christ, because I think we need to pray not only that we would represent Jesus to the best of our ability, that we would pray that we would continue to live this life, not being deceived, but living the life that Jesus has planned for us. So I want to pray today, and I want to give everyone the opportunity to give their life to Jesus if they haven't done so already. So with every head bowed and with every eye closed, I would like to give this opportunity to anyone in this room, to anyone watching online, and to anyone anywhere who may want to give their life to Jesus today. I want to give the opportunity. So on the count of three, if you'd like to give your life to Jesus today, just go ahead and slip up your hand. One, two, three, go ahead. Awesome. I see that hand. I see a hand. Anyone else? Anyone else? else would like to give their life to Jesus. Awesome. I see you. I see you. Anyone else? Awesome. Awesome. Well, hey, I want to extend this invite to those of you watching online. If you would like to give your life to Jesus today as well, I just want to encourage you, click that button that says, I gave my life to Jesus today, and we'd love to be in contact with, in contact with you within the upcoming week, and we'd love to talk to you about the decision that you made. Awesome. All right, pray with me this morning. God, we thank you for who you are. And God, I thank you that you have given all of us in this room the amazing, amazing opportunity to be representatives of you. God, I thank you that this morning you have given us the amazing and amazing privilege of being able to represent you with our lives. 
And God, I pray for anyone who raised their hand, for anyone who gave their life to you this morning. I pray that today would mark the beginning of a journey that is so amazing and so awesome and marks the beginning of a decision that they will never regret. And yes, there will be hard times. Yes, there may be pain. Yes, there may be suffering. And yes, there may even be unanswered prayers along the way. But God, may they hold strong to their faith because of what you have done for them. Jesus, may you strengthen us by reminding us of the work that you have done on the cross. And may that be all the strength we need to continue to live for you for the rest of our lives. And God, I want to lift up everyone in this room who claims to be a representative, who claims to be a Christian, who claims to be a follower and a son and daughter of you. I want to lift up everyone in this room, and I pray that you would continue to help us. God, continue to help us, continue to lead us, continue to strengthen us and give us eyes to see that we stay on the path that you have chosen for us that, God, we would not be deceived, that there's nothing a deceiver could add to your gospel, there's nothing a deceiver could take away from your gospel, but, God, we would be completely committed to your truth and to the lifestyle that you have given us. God, I thank you for who you are. I pray that you would just be with us in this place. You would continue to lead us, continue to use us for your glory. Holy Spirit, be praying on behalf of the things that we don't even know we need prayer for, which you do. God, you see what every person in this room needs. You see what every person in this room is struggling with. And I pray that we would all remember that we are representatives of you because of what you've done for us. God, we thank you. I pray that you would increase the knowledge of your gospel, the knowledge of your son Jesus in our lives. And may your will and your call on our lives continue to be fulfilled throughout the rest of our lives. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us at Avalon Church. Share this message with a friend and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single video. You can also join us every Sunday live on the Avalon Church Facebook page. If you feel led to give and support our mission of bringing people wherever they are into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ, you can do so by clicking the Give button. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time.